Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the 20th episode, I think it is, of our Java game development tutorial series. Uh, congratulations on sticking with it uh, this far. The re and it seems kind of like, uh, you know, we're making slow progress, but that's because I, r I really wanted to show you the basic concepts that, once understood, can extend to all types of games. Uh, that's why it's taken us 20 episodes to get where we are, but hopefully you've got a really good understanding of what we've covered so far. Um, Today we're going to create animations uh, for our sprites. I'm going to show you how we're going to do animations. Um, here's how I go about doing that. First thing I do is, um, let's put this in our graphics package. I'm going to create a class. I'm going to call it animation. Now, what it's going to have is it's going to have uh, a public um, array list of type buffered image. We're going to call this images it equals a new array list of type buffered image. Import both of those. Um, it's going to have a method here: public void. Uh, sorry, public buffered image get image, and we'll say return images dot get current image. Let's create that integer public int current image equals zero. Let's create an, an, a constructor now, public animation. And well, it takes an array. Now let's not do that. Let's just, uh, let's forget the constructor actually. Create a method public void play animation. Um, here we're going to create a little uh, variable, a public int FPS. I hope I'm not going too fast. I I think I heard in the comments some people some people have to you know pause the video and slow down. I tend to go through too quickly. I know uh, I make that mistake. I'm supposed to be teaching. I'm not coding for myself right here. When I code for myself, I go faster usually than I'm able to keep up with. <laughs> even public int FPS equals let's say 12. That's a good frames per second to start with or 8, or whatever you like. It depends on your animation. Uh, each animation is going to have a different frames per second. Um, public void play animation. What we do is we say, uh, sorry, we need another thing. Private long last, no, uh, no, let's make this a float. No, definitely a long. Private long last time equals 0. What we'll do is we'll say that if System dot nano time is greater than last time plus one zero 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 zero, which is one billionth of a second or one nanosecond. I'm sorry, one second. Uh, it's, this is uh, in this is one billion billionth of a second or one second in nanoseconds. I think I got that right. So, uh, one second in nanoseconds divided by FPS. This is going to basically say if the time right now is greater than the last time that we switched frames plus the amount of time that we need to wait between frames, then obviously we need to uh, switch frames. So we say current image plus plus. If current image is greater than or equal to images dot size, then we've reached uh, we've we've gone past the end of the uh, animation, and current image equals zero, because we want to loop over again. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, and actually, at the beginning, we're gonna say if. Oh wait, no, that's not something we have to worry about. Um. First, right here, whatever we call get image, we're going to say that if uh, images dot size is greater than zero, um, actually, just if images dot size is greater than current image, then we can return this because we don't want to return any uh, 
we don't want to try and return images in a, in something that are going to get an array index out of bounds for trying to get an image that doesn't exist. Uh, and if we reach the end of the method, we can return null because there's no image. Um, I think that's that's about what we want. Um, so now in sprite, we're going to go in and go ahead and mess with something here. Here where we say public buffered image image equals null. We're not going to use an image anymore. We're going to use an animation or an an rather an array of animations. So I'm going to say public uh, array list. And uh, no, let's make this public animation array animations equals actually for, for right now it won't equal anything because we'll want to change that later. I'm going to import animation. Um, now here we're going to say buffered image image equals animations current animation dot get get image and import that um, we're going to create that integer public int current animation equals zero it's the, it's the animation that we're going to play first of course though we'll want to uh, return early if uh, animations is equal to null or animations dot length um, actually if current animation is greater than or equal to animations dot length that we want to return because we're gonna because otherwise this will return null and we'll have problems or actually this will give us a array index out of bounds exception and we don't want that um, so we check if image is null if uh, it is then we return um, la -da -da, and everything else should proceed as normal the only difference is now uh, we have animations so here in our player class uh, here we set our image to be renderer.load image blah 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 uh, instead what we, what we want to do is we want to say animation and actually let's say animations equals new animation array and we're going to create a block out of this and we're going to put an animation inside it um, so let's create an animation animation anim equals new animation anim dot images dot add this uh, whole load image line right here minus the semicolon and get rid of uh, this block oh and uh, well we have to surround this in try and catch it also uh, anim dot images dot add that and then here in animations uh, where we create our animation array, um, we'll add anim to the list. And then um, here in test sprite, uh, we're not using test sprite anywhere, are we? I don't think we're using test sprite anywhere, so we can uh, actually delete this entire package. No need to worry about fixing that because we're not using it. Uh, let's run the game and see. Nothing should look any different. If it does, then something went wrong. Hopefully it doesn't. And as you can see, nothing looks any different. But uh, we still, but we're actually using our new animation system. And the reason why that's good, I will demonstrate by adding an image to our bullet sprite. Or rather, two images. We're going to create a little animation for it. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get rid of that because we're going to use the default sprite rendering system. Um, and here we're going to, in the constructor, we're going to say animation anim equals new, you can name your animations whatever you want. I just name it anim because it's the only one we've got for this uh, sprite. Uh, equals new animation anim dot images dot add um, renderer dot load image slash resources slash bullet zero dot png. I've made uh, two images here. Bullet zero, which looks like 
this. Zoom in so you can see it a little better. This looks like that. And bullet one, which looks like the same thing except in yellow. So it's going to flash back and forth between uh, red and yellow to test our little animation system. Surround this with try and catch, of course, uh, in case there are return to load images that don't exist. Um, and I duplicate the line and change this to bullet1.png. So we've got the two different bullets. And now we say animations, uh, sorry, lowercase n, or a, animations equals new animation array. And inside of it, we're going to put uh, anim. Relatively simple. The only difference is we're going to change in our up update method. We're going to say, uh, yeah, we're going to say anim. Actually, better yet, in our render method, public void, because it makes more sense to put it in our render method. Public void render. Um, we're going to say animations current animation dot play animation. Then super dot render. Oh, sorry, graphics G. And import that. Um, anyway, um, we call current animation dot play animation. Then we call super dot render G for future reference. Much like with the constructor where you call super. Uh, if you, for those of you who don't know, if you call super dot something, it will basically, even though we've overridden uh, the render method right here, um, you know, if we had overwritten this render method the original render method in the sprite class, which is the super class of the bullet, it's the thing that the bullet extends, the render method there is never called because we override it. Calling super.render will call that um, that function, uh, that met method um, in the super class. So by saying this, we're basically just appending this to the beginning of um, the beginning of our function. In fact, come to think of it, we may not even need to do this at all because it makes a lot of sense to have animations current animation dot play animation at the beginning of the render method of the sprite because every sprite's going to need to do that anyway. So here at the beginning, um, we'll do this: animations current animation dot play animation in the sprite class in the render method. Anyway, if we run the game now. Check it out. Uh, whenever uh, I press the S key, nothing happens. Something failed. Oh, that's right. Um, in the bullet class, here resources slash bullet. In mine, it's resources images bullet. So resources slash images slash bullet. Okay. Now when we run it, la 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 la, la and I press. S, our bullet appears and it flashes back and forth between two uh, two different colors. You also notice it's affecting our sprite. Uh, our sprite's colliding with it, uh, thinks it's on the ground, or at least thinks it can't be moving. But pretty cool though that you see uh, the the flashing of the animation and all that. That's pretty cool. We've just made some awesome progress here, and you have created uh, projectiles for your game. Uh, soon those projectiles will actually do something. Uh, first, let's say, um, what was it I called the, the variable? In our bullet class, in the constructor, is solid equals false. Yeah, is solid is what I was looking for. Um, that will keep us from colliding with it, as you can see. Uh, or maybe it won't. Did I remember to check for is solid? Let me see. In the player class, let's, where, let's see, where is does collide? Uh, okay, here where we say if sprite is equal to this, in our player class, in the does collide method, if sprite is equal to this, we want to continue, because we can't collide with ourselves. Well, let's add something else. If sprite is equal to this, or sprite is not solid, then continue, because we don't want to collide with non-solid sprites. Whoops. <laughs> what have I just done? We fell completely through the ground. Did I make the platform not solid? Oh, wait a second. 
are sprites not solid by default? They're not solid by default. <laughs> let's let's do something about that. Uh, is solid is true by default. If we want it false, we'll specifically set it false. All right, that's better. Now you can see that the sprites aren't messing us up anymore, or the bullet sprites aren't keeping us from moving. Now, obviously, our direction's messed up, but we'll work on that in a future episode. This one's already run slightly longer than I would like it to. Um, thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you like this episode, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and I will see you next time. Bye.